Welcome to another edition of The Leaders. I'm Yuli Ismartono from Asia Views. I'm here in Jakarta, capital of Indonesia, to chat with Dr. Rizal Sukma, who is the Deputy Executive Director of CSIS, the Center for Strategic International Studies. Dr. Sukma is an expert on security issues. In 1998, Indonesia embarked on an ambitious program of reforms and democratization. There have been some successes in the past 10 years. A free press, direct elections, a streamlined bureaucracy, and an ongoing battle against corruption. However, Indonesia's efforts in nation building face a lot of challenges. Dr. Sukma has identified seven of them and they are non-traditional security issues. One of them being terrorism and internal conflict, transnational pollution, and the growing demand for energy. We will speak about these and other topics with Dr. Rizal Sukma. In addition to his job at CSIS, Dr. Sukma is also a member of the Central Executive Board of Muhammadiyah, the second largest Islamic organization in Indonesia. Dr. Sukma received his PhD from the London School of Economics and Political Science in the subject of international relations. For his contribution on security issues, including pushing for military reforms in Indonesia, Dr. Sukma received the Nakasone Yasuhiro Award in 2003. Rizal, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, my pleasure. In your paper, one of your papers, Indonesia's non-traditional security challenges and regional responses, you mention seven non-traditional security threats. Which ones, in your opinion, deserve the most attention? Uh, if you look at you know all the seven issues uh, that I identified, you know actually it's hard actually you know to you know to say uh, which one is the most important you know because you know within the Indonesian context you know we're all facing actually uh, all these uh, problems at the same time, uh, but of course you know there are a number of issues you know out of that seven uh, issues that you know we need to uh, really pay attention to uh, in the short term. Uh, one of them is really you know the uh, uh, threats of terrorism. You know uh, even though now we know that. You know the threat of terrorism, you know, uh, has been in decline. But of course, you know, uh, we're not sure actually, you know, to what extent that this terrorism, you know, has no longer posed a uh, serious threat, you know, to, to Indonesia. The other issue is actually the drive for uh, uh, energy, you know, because now we are talking about having uh, 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 the nuclear power plant, you know, and so on. So the safety aspect of it, I think, you know, is very important for us and also to uh, uh, talk about. Let me go back to your answer about terrorism. Terrorism in Indonesia is in decline but it is still present in other parts of uh, the region, like in southern Philippines, in southern Thailand, and they say they are well connected to terrorism cells in Indonesia. Uh, I, I think we have to uh, make you know, distinction you know, between you know, ideological-based you know, terrorist network you know, and uh, 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 terrorist attacks uh, based on either you know, separatist ideas you know, and so on. Because the ideological-based, you know, terrorist network, you know, I think pose more uh, graver, you know, uh, threats, you know, compared to those uh, sporadic attacks, you know, that actually target civilians, you know, in cases like in Thailand or, you know, in 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 in, in, in southern Mindanao. Uh, in our case, you know, I think Indonesia was. I'm not sure whether it still is, you know, at the moment, you know, uh, the hub, you know, for these regional networks of uh, terrorist uh, organization, which actually, you know, have links. Uh, with you know some groups within Southeast Asia, uh, where they actually you know train together you know and so on, but I'm not sure whether that kind of links also exist you know between the regional terrorist network with the global one. You know I think the the link is only you know ideological and inspirational rather than you know a real link where they actually work you know work together. So y the conclusion is that in Indonesia terrorism has declined, but we still must be alert. Yes, uh, decline in the sense that you know a number of attacks. Yeah, uh, 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 but you know, of course, uh, the terrorist network you know will always you know try to consolidate you know and so on. And here you know my main worry is basically you know we tend to be you know uh, uh, complacent, and that you know, actually you know uh, uh, the space that you know the terrorists actually you know need in order to consolidate and you know emerge again and pose even more serious threats. Do you agree with some assumption that terrorism 
is closely linked with the economic situation in the country. Poverty breeds terrorism. Uh, only at one uh, level, eh? but I don't think that you know poverty is the cause, you know, for you know for terrorism. But actually, poverty can provide you know a very fertile breeding grounds for the foot soldiers you know, within you know the t uh, terrorist uh, 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 network. So actually, you know, it's, it's helped the recruitment process. But you know, the, the root cause is, I think, you know, much wider, you know, than than, than only the issue of of uh, poverty, you know, because if we say that poverty is the cause of you know terrorism, that means you know, there should be around like maybe 2.5 billion terrorists in the world. <laughs> because these are the people you know who live under poverty line, but the violent you know uh, uh, interpretation of a certain you know uh, uh, ideology or religious teaching, I think, is also you know part you know of these uh, 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 terrorist you know ideas. You also mention the growing demand for energy as uh, one threat that deserves attention. Yes, um, and you mentioned the Indonesia possibly. Uh, uh, creating nuclear energy yeah but we have coal we have oil and we're rich in gas yeah that's exactly you know the, uh, the point that you know I'm trying to make uh, while you know we have not really explored you know other sources uh, alternative sources you know we already uh, uh, decided that you know by 2012 you know we would you know start uh, to uh, generate you know the uh, nuclear energy as a source you know for energy but you know until today there is not enough you know debate yet you know both within the government and also uh, in, the, in the society, you know, about, you know, the, 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 the safety, you know, uh, dimensions, you know, of that uh, uh, decision. Especially if, if we uh, 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 now realize that Indonesia is basically uh, almost like encyclopedia of disasters, uh, you name it, all kind of disasters, you know, occurs in the country, then how can we be assured, you know, that, you know, nuclear power plants, you know, on, you know, in a country which is situated, you know, in the ring of fire, you know, can be safe. So that's the number one, not to mention about all the you know uh, security implications also not only safety where you know uh, uh, the uh, safety of the stockpiling and so on you know are still in questions and in fact a lot of people actually make a joke that if we cannot even you know manage you know train you know very well then you know, how can we manage nuclear power plant good point